Ah, don't need that. Welcome back to the channel, guys. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the process of how I made a full custom exhaust system out of stainless steel using multiple pie cuts uh, for my 1989 Mustang GT Turbo Resto Mod 20D Freestyle Edition Mustang. Before the video gets started, I'm gonna just get caught up to, to speed with you on a few mechanical things that we had to address uh, starting the beginning of the year. A after this video, there's gonna be a there's gonna be a series of videos titled "Big Problem, Big Solutions." Okay, um, we had some the cars making a lot of power, and I I'm feeling a little bit too much chassis flex on this car, and we're fixing that in those videos. So during this time, I've had the car up on cribs. I've also, you're going to see some changes because I'm doing both at the same time while I'm up in the air, okay? So um, just bear with me on that. And don't think I don't work here and I'm just only just shining stuff up here, guys. I do work. Oh my God. Toasted. Toasted. I mean... It's just that the pressure plate here, guys, this, this pressure plate is no good. All right, it's just not heavy duty enough. This is a uh, Valero. They call it their, this is their stage four. It's, it's crap. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're gonna need all the help we can get on this one, guys. Flip the motor mount up there. You can see how it's lifted off the plate. Up top, where the bolt is, it's actually bent. So the motor mounts, tacoed this way this one you can see toward the top how it's bent what do you do when steel motor mounts bend you know uh, I'm trying to understand why they bent I don't understand why I don't have that kind of power um, but I just placed an order for Team Z solid motor mounts will give the, the, their design allows a little bit of flex so we're gonna try those and see what happens. If I put the Team Z ones in there and they bend again, then we're gonna to have to, then we're gonna to have to seriously consider doing a motor plate. I really don't want to do that though. I've been eyeballing how I'm gonna do the exhaust. So my my scallop here. I'm gonna come down here. Forty five. Another forty five. I'm gonna to have to get real tight, right in this area to get up and over. Cause I got this hole contraption here for this pan hard bar same on this side it's going to be tight coming from over there i'll have that turn after the transmission cross member it'll turn it'll come straight single muffler here it'll split to dual it'll have two pipes running back two pipes running back like this and then it'll go up and over Basically, guys, if you go back and watch the turbo hot side video uh, where I made the hot side on this car, I go over uh, in depth really, really good about uh, making the bends and all that. But um, just to show you real quick, because I'm all set up, I said now's a good time to show you like exactly what's going on. Um, these are just the basic tools I have out. I'm not working outside right now because the garage clean. I don't want to make a mess. So I got a flap wheel right there. I got my cutoff wheel. And I got a uh, Scotch Brite for doing inside the pipes, and a Scotch Brite buff right there uh, for cleaning up the outside. In my hands, pretty much, I got a deburr tool, screwdriver for the hose clamp, and a magic marker. So this is how I make my straight lines. Like I, I, once again, go back and check out the uh, hot side build, where I go over all that stuff. And I mean, that's pretty much the setup. That I use, and right now I'm just I'm, I'm gonna whack this off so I can put a V band on there. All right, guys. So I chopped up some of the other the old exhaust. All right, and what I try to do is I try to just pre-polish everything. It's this way it makes life easier moving forward. So now I've, I just blazed up these tabs here and here. So what I'll do is I'm gonna hang the muffler right in this area it's gonna fuck it's gonna have the uh, 45 degree V band here so it'll come this way 
and then attach here. So boom, boom, boom. All right, and then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some, some, uh, some stainless plate and I'm gonna make some brackets on the side of the muffler and, and just be able to bolt it up right here and right there, all right? It's a rigid mount system this way because the downpipe is rigid. Yeah, everything's rigid there, so there's no issues. This is a 16th inch stainless plate. Nice stuff. So you see what I did? This came out of a drop-in at the at the, uh, the steel supply. So you get a, a cheaper price on this stuff. So what I do is I just take my scotch Bright, my scotch Bright right there, and I just give it a pre-polish on both sides. This way, when we cut this out, it's nice and clean. There's the less work we gotta do with a smaller part when we go to, uh, you know, final fitting and then welding up, you know what I mean? So these are the two plates of stainless plate that I cut. All right, and then what I'll do is just show you my, uh, my madness here. All right, so this will mount something like this. Obviously, I'm gonna cut it and shape it and make it all fancy, fancy, nicey, nice. But uh, that's pretty much where we're going with this. It'll look sharp and it's gonna work really good. This is kind of like why I pre-polish everything. So this way, when I wipe this down, I could tack this right in place right here in the car. So I got the height of the muffler itself even with the downpipe. All right, so I'm gonna go 40, I'm gonna go straight, do 45, 45 in. I got a V-band here, so if I wanna drop this mid-pipe, I can drop it and run it wide open, you know, if I want to, all right? Um, so we got our brackets on, and you know, a little bit bending here and there, a little bit of twisties on it, just to get it in a relaxed, a relaxed position, all right? So that's relaxed. We got zero level there. So I want the pipes to go straight back. I don't know if you can see the bubble. And the bubble's level, all right? And I measured my distances between the muffler and the subframe connector, all right? So we're even, so we're, it's, so the yaw is good, the pitch is good. And it's even this way, all right? So now I'm just gonna tack this in position, all right? And then we can work on making the mid pipe and then these tail pipes, all right? Yeah, I just got this creeper, you hear this thing dragging? Oh my God, what a pain in the ass. I blew both wheels off it already. All right, the, the, uh, <laughs> the mounts just blew right off, so now when I get on it, it's just, it's just bottoming out, I'm, I'm scraping, all right? Ah, whatever. As I promised you, this is the Andelli inverter TIG machine. So basically, it's a standard TIG, and it's got this setting on here. It's like a cold welding process, right? So there, there's really nothing cold about it. It's not like a regular TIG where you have that high frequency start. It takes like a second to get going. This is its own thing. It's got like a little blast of power, and then you can adjust the duration of the power, and you can adjust your actual... Uh, heat range and all that stuff and I gotta say I have a lot of good things to say about this process I'll get into it a little bit more when we get on the bench and I can like show you straight up what it's doing because uh, we, we always talk a lot of crap of oh like you know Chinese crap like the exhaust systems like we've all seen their exhaust their mufflers I always wondered like how do they get those those TIG welds so small on this such thin material and so dialed in and so perfect. They've been doing this process over there for years. It's a new process to me. I'm trying it out and it seems to be working very good. As I showed you in the last video, I mean, I welded these two razor blades together, guys. Like, that's ridiculous, all right? Um, is it strong? I mean, I don't know. I'm looking at the penetration and it's, it's penetrating. Like, it, it's not a bad weld, so. I know there's gonna be some old school guys out there that are gonna like not like this, but at the same time, I'm kinda of old school and I'm trying something new, all right? What's the worst thing that could possibly happen? A weld fail? I don't know, I doubt it. Not on this thin material. You have to understand something. The tubing that I bought, all right? Doesn't matter where you get it from, this tubing kit, all right? This is very thin. Stainless, 
right? This stuff is made in China, all right? They manufacture stuff out of it in China. And they weld it, all right? And I used to think it was some crazy machine. So now it's out, it's released, whatever. I like it. It's very controllable. And this machine is very cheap. So I don't know. We'll see what happens, you know? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up there. I'm going to tack it, see how I do upside down under the car. And then once I'm all done, I'll get it out of the car and, you know, we'll show you, all right? Just a quick way, I'm, I have this set up. It's a number eight cup, all right, with a 16 tungsten. And if I need any filler rod, I'm using 45,000 filler rod. There's a lot of schools of thought on welding this type of material. Bigger tungsten, a little bit bigger rod, quicker heat and move. I'm really not that fast and I'm not the greatest TIG welder in the world. So the slower, the better for me. Problem is, if you weld even on low amperage, slow, you cook the stainless. It, and it doesn't take much to cook it. I mean, we're talking about a technique that really needs to practice, all right? So you, got, you can get into this whole setup for, you can get the machine, get your bottle of gas, get your, get your better uh, cups and all that stuff. You can be into this for less than like six, seven hundred dollars. Don't forget, you gotta have a 220 outlet and all that stuff, but to get into TIG welding, these days, it's very affordable. My first TIG machine that I bought was over $3,000, and it was a basic machine. That was 20 years ago. So, in this day and age, if you wanna learn how to TIG, it's very affordable right now. Guys, I, I'm doing this, I'm doing this upside down, and I gotta say, I mean, the result ain't bad. Right? I think this thing's gonna focus or what? I'm not using any filler rod here. I'm just melting the two of them together. And it's quick short burst. So let me try to let me try to set you over here and just show you like the rate of the pulse and what this machine's actually doing. I'm just holding my finger down on the button. And every time it every time it flashes, I'm just moving ever ever so slightly. It's like spot welding. Guys, come on. Come on with that. I like it. I like it. Something new. Holy shit. Pretty decent, guys. So, I mean, the heat, the heat's perfect. You know, uh, you know, it's stainless steel. This isn't sanitary stuff. So, to have this little discoloration is fine. I'm at... 150 amps and I'm at the frequency is 10 nice no warping easy I'm pretty happy with this I'm actually excited about this all right we're back on it I'm working on the mid pipe okay and I had just enough just a little squeeze just enough to tack this on here left so I got to go get some more gas but uh this is the main thing right here. We run into a situation where we have a compound angle. You can see it's skinny up, skinny gap over here and a fat gap over here, right? So, you know, nothing's ever perfect, right? So I went out there and I just cut a little piece of pie. I eyeballed it. All right, so I just kind of just eyeballed it, whatever. All right, just to see. And I just want to point out to you guys, with this stainless steel, when you do something like this, 
right now that's damn close but it's not good enough all right i'm like the width of a cutoff wheel away all right now could i tack it and push it together yes absolutely but if i do that i will forever fight this downpipe every time i take this thing on and off uh, i'm not about that life okay so just so you can see i, I got my ptf ptfe tape here all right, this is a high heat tape. Watch the uh, hot side video, guys. I go over all this stuff. Recycling some, as much exhaust as I can. This was, this was the original stuff. So I got my position good. All right, clearance on the cross members good. Everything's good. So like I said, so what I'll do is now, I'll go out there and cut just a sliver bigger. All right, this way it fits up nice. When I go to tack it in, it's perfect. And I'll never have to fight with this. You know, for the Fox body, you gotta have your tail, you gotta have your eyes automatically go to the tailpipes. I mean, mine do. So, this is a really good way to, to hang exhaust pipes or anything like that. So, um, you know, basically, I laminated two pieces of this uh, real thin stainless, drilled some holes, and then I just spread my distances equally. Really easy, guys. So, the tips, the exhaust tips are going to come down to this line. Here's my center line. I actually use the seam because it's going to be on the top side so you don't see it from underneath. All right. Um, so, we have that distance and we need a half inch in between. In this particular application with the types of tips I'm using, I needed that half inch, right? So, I went over an inch. I drew another straight line. How I do that? I just get my piece of angle, now lay the pipe in the angle, no big deal, and I draw my straight line, okay? So now what I'll do is, I know that I needed this distance here, I draw my line across, I kind of just freehanded that, and then ultimately what we're looking to do is, we want something like this, okay? Very good, very strong way of doing this. You can make this really fancy if you put some racing holes in there and everything like that. But um, to save on my hands and the tools, uh, I just elected not to do that only because it's, this stuff's really tough to get through. You know, it's very hard to drill. Just measure, take your time. I don't measure like this for everything, but when it comes to the, fight, the ends, like when we're at the bumper, it's kind of critical because you don't want your, your shit to be all wonky. It's gotta be nice and straight, you know what I mean? You can really see how nice of a job and how much control you end up getting with this. I mean, wow, you know. So, you, you know, to wrap it up with that, there is definitely a place in this world for this type of machine and technology. And, and I'm really, the more I'm playing with it, the more I'm loving this thing. Line up your seams, guys. You have to do this on a bike. If, if it's like right in your face, right in your eyeball, you gotta do this. If not, and you always try to put the exhaust seam on the inside, you know, you know, if you, you don't want to be able to see it. But, uh, you know, in this case, it's under the car, so it doesn't really matter where the seam falls. But, uh, like I said, it just helps it out look aesthetically pleasing because when the seams are off like that, it looks crazy. A little detail that you might want to just pay attention to when you're doing this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm having a few issues with this machine, guys. You know, for the spot welding, it works great. But uh, on regular TIG mode, on on the stainless, this machine, it only has a it only has a push button, no foot pedal. So it's really, really fussy to try to get everything just dialed in right because you don't you don't have the ability to to pulse with your with your pedal. It's just on and off. So um, big, huge thumbs up on the on the cold welding feature, but on the normal normal tig it's a little bit challenging it's kind of a pain in the ass but we're going to get it done no matter what I'm not promoting this machine at all i'm impressed by the technology i wish and i hope that some of the more reputable manufacturers out there get on board with this technology and start offering it in a, a higher quality tig machine you know that you're going to get a good torch, a good foot pedal, pulse feature, spot well, spot well feature, 
you know, all the bells and whistles. There's no reason, you know, there's no reason for why uh, they can't offer that, especially that this technology is readily available. One of the other things too is, especially when you don't have a foot pedal, you can't back out of your arc and swirl around a little bit to prevent getting a little, uh, little fish eye. So that's something that's a little bit challenging. I've been stuffing the rod real hard every time I, every time I let off it to try to prevent that. Basically, what you gotta understand here is, this is not like pulse, in it, like, a, like a normal TIG machine pulse. When, when you have pulse, you're operating your foot pedal or your button, and the machine's gonna go high amperage, low amperage, high amperage, low amperage, and there's your pulse pattern. Okay, the machine never shuts off. In this situation, you have this, it's like a timer, all right? And you can adjust the speed of the actual pulses, if you will, all right? And when it fires, it fires full power, and then it shuts off. Simple comment, it's a simple concept, but this is, this is incredible, you know? It works unbelievably, like, you still gotta go through all your basic practices and you know clean everything real good, especially on stainless. Stainless is a pain in the ass. But I mean, this was the other day I was jerking around with the machine and I'm just I'm putting these V bands on now. I mean, you can see it's working, right? The inside, it's penetrated. It's like just right there on the borderline of sugaring. Cool. I wouldn't use this on a hot side. I, I would purge a hot side. Even if I did use this process, I would probably want to be a little bit hotter and I, I would definitely purge a hot side. I'm not saying do this on your hot side. But for the exhaust, after the downpipe, I mean, guys, this is not, this is not sanitary tubing. It's not for food or dairy. This is an exhaust pipe for a car, all right? After the turbo. So. I'm kind of cool with this and I'm, I'm really excited to see how it's going to hold up. The heat that I'm getting out of this on this thin material, I'm pretty sure it's going to last for a very long time. And what does that mean? If, if it lasts for 10 years, is that okay? I'm okay with that. To give you a little example of what this machine's actually doing. That's how we're moving along, guys. Pretty good. I mean, that temperature, you can't complain about that temperature. It's, it's pretty good. The process is actually really fun. It's hard to see because of the flashing. It's confusing my helmet, even though it's not the greatest helmet in the world. Maybe a, a regular set of, uh, a regular helmet would be better, one that's not oil tinting. Is this the way? No, it's a way, right? That's how we're looking on the exhaust. Pretty happy with the way it came out. So now, from here, it's just gonna be uh, working the tailpipes and then getting over the axle. So, you know, keep on going. How's that for uh, laser alignment? I like it. I like it. You know how us bike guys are, we're all about those pipes. Pipes gotta be, pipes gotta be just right. If not, ruin the whole car. We're making progress. So far. This is where I said it was going to get real, real tight over here, guys. 
So when you know when the axle goes up, it, it, it's going to move. It's going to want to rock forward a little bit. Got to keep some space here for this upper control arm. So when I jack the car up and the axle does come down, doesn't want to interfere with the pipe. So right in here, I mean, I can barely fit my finger in between the upper torque box and this pipe. But like once again, it's rigid mounted. It's not going to shake, rattle, or roll. All right. So. Still working on this angle here, you can see. That's how the tailpipe's mounted. So we gotta go from here to here yet. I really don't like this hard 90, but it's the best we can do. Very tight. The slip joints that come with these, this pipe kit, you know, the female portion is long, you know? So what I like to do is cut them down and I'm going to cheat this, you know, because while I'm mocking it up, I can sit here and put the pipe in and rotate it and all that stuff. So it's a little bit of a cheat. It's, it's a lot easier. I'm working on the ground here, guys, obviously, and I only got one set of hands. So this helps me out a lot. Plus, it makes it look a lot better when you shorten this joint down. All right. When I weld this up, it's actually going to look pretty good. All right. Um. Now, in this case, where, so I had to get a short piece here. I do have a V, um, I do have a 15 degree pie cut up here because I had to, I had to tilt, you know, this came up on an angle. I had to tilt it straight. So I got 15 degrees on that. And then I went over here with a 90 and I'm coming down up over the axle. So in this case, there's no room to put a V band. All right. And I'm, I'm going to have to have this set up so I can remove the system when need be, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, instead of use the, like a vibrant triple slip here, which is unnecessary, I'm going to do just this slip that comes with this pipe kit. However, I'm going to use a spring kit on each side. And I'm also going to have a bracket from here to here and have that rigid. So in between the joint, there'll be no pressure on the slip here and there'd be no, no way it could rattle. All right. So here's kind of a better shot of it through, <laughs> through the freaking wheel. You can see how much space we got now. I mean, it, it's a, it's a good amount of space for the axle to travel. And like I said, it won't interfere um, when the axle does drop from jacking on it. Guys, on regular TIG mode, this machine works pretty good. Uh, I'm starting to understand the machine a little bit better. It, it, is, uh, it doesn't have the most stable arc compared to other machines, but it gets the job done, so um, no big deal. I'm, I'm welding this at 40 amps, straight with the push button, and it seems to be working good. I did upgrade my cup to a, a size 12 gas lens with a diffuser inside, so that made all the difference in the world uh, on this particular situation but the fit up here wasn't that great but machines having no problem welding it up all right so just take that for what it is i mean it is a cheaper machine but it's doing pretty good so far all right guys we're coming up on the grand finale over here let's take a look Ugh. Got a great amount of clearance here. I mean, this is unheard of for on a Fox body, and this is a big old tire. All right. So, tire clearance, clearance on the gas tank. Up and over the axle. This is where I'm going to weld the springs on. So, we'll have our slip here so we can remove the back half. I'm going to weld this bracket on. That's just in position right now. 
simple little setup. Weld all this other stuff up and that's it. Let me get this all tacked up. Then we'll weld it up. Then we can fire this girl up and see what she sounds like. It's just been a lot of this uh, prepping, holding in position, tacking together. I went ahead and removed it, the exhaust system from the vehicle. And here we are now on the bench. Welding everything up. This is from a real world perspective. This isn't, uh, I'm not, I don't TIG every day. And I'm not an artist either with my TIG work. But this is how, this is the result we got. All right. Is that strong? That's strong. Is, is that going to break? Is that going to be a, an issue? Is there a problem with the integrity? Absolutely not, guys. Absolutely not. You can make this really nice. If I took a scotch brite to this and buffed it, it's going to look great. Um, I'm going to leave it like this, though. Going for the, uh, the natural look. That'll last for a little while, and then once it starts getting kind of beat up under the car, I'll just scotch brite it then and be done with it. But for the most part, this is how we're doing along. We're going to put the springs on now, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so this is how... It ended up, tailpipes. I did give it a wrap coming over the axles because I'm so damn close. I mean, that's freaking close, guys. Yeah, this will come out. I'll drop the whole pipe, shift this over if I ever got to get this out of here. But now I did give this a little tack weld on both sides. Where the springs were because it was just it was moving you know everything's solid mounted guys it was just moving around so i just gave it a quick little tack if i ever gotta if i ever gotta take it off which probably not hopefully not Pretty good, guys. I'm happy with that. All right, it's just a different way, different way to do your Fox body exhaust. Again, I'll get into all the, the Team Z subframe connectors and stuff in another time. We'll talk about those. Real happy with the way this came out, guys. Guys, I apologize. I'm not gonna. I'm not able to give you any throttle twisties in this video. You're gonna have to stand by for the next one because I was having problems with the with the car running. It, this thing was like acting super crazy at idle. To, and after like two weeks of just playing with it, I was messing with the tune and this and that and blah blah blah. Uh, long and short of it, uh, fuel pressure regulator uh, totally took a crap on me. It was leaking fuel. Out of the vacuum port so the, the diaphragm blew up and it was just doing all kinds of crazy things so uh just waiting for parts and on that and um you know we'll just have to deal with that all right so um yeah you'll hear the twisties in the next one that's gonna wrap this one up for now all right i will definitely catch you in the next one all right until then keep wrenching keep doing your thing and don't get distracted by things that don't matter Okay? I'll see you.
Peace.